ask you about Gaza, but I want to back into the question. And it's a little bit longer because I want to quote from you. Um, so yesterday, November the 1st, was the 81st week of the Great March of Return. But back in uh, uh, April of this year, you wrote what I thought was a, a very powerful and incisive, uh, even brave, I thought, op-ed for Al Jazeera. How the left also dehumanizes Palestinians in Gaza. You remember that. Uh, I want to just quote from it. If, so forgive me, it's a little longer of a quote. but And I want you to talk about what I'm quoting here. Narratives that imbue Palestinians with mythical bravery are harmful. When our lives, resistance, and struggle are framed in mythical terms, not only does it obscure our humanity, but it diminishes the depravity of Israel's control over millions of Palestinian lives. The discourse of Sumud, steadfastness, set us up for failure at every turn. That's the sentence that really caught me because we like, in the West, we like to think of Samud. You know, that, that's emblematic of the Palestinian struggle, you know, and so that sentence really grabbed me. On one hand, it supposes that Palestinians can endure anything. On the other hand, it suffuses the unuttered assumption that Palestinians deserve to be free because we are good, brave, nonviolent, and steadfast. But the truth is we are nothing more or less than human. Again, I thought it was a powerful and brave article that, that really was instructive for me. So say a little bit more about what you were trying to tell us there, especially we on the left who want to be in solidarity with our Palestinian friends. Um, right, so, so the way that Palestinians are portrayed is um, in, 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 in the popular imagination, whether it's on the right or the left, is, um, is very much stereotyp stereotypic. So on the right, you know, you have these, um, these, uh, uh, this narrative of terrorists and irrational, crazy, backward, um, subhuman even, uh, sort of uh, conceptions of Palestinians. And on the left, you have these, um, these sort of, it's either, um, it's, the, it's, it's either like this, the poor victim kind of uh, narrative, people who are hungry and, and desperate, who need our help, or there's these sort of superhero romanticized images of, of Palestinians who have this extraordinary bravery and who can endure anything and who, uh, who just keep trekking, keep going, no matter what is thrown at them. And, um, and, uh, and, and those narratives are just, in my opinion, they're just as dangerous and false as, uh, as the narratives on the right. And the fact is that, you know, people in Gaza are extremely traumatized as any group of human beings would be under the conditions that they are forced to live under. And there are a lot of different reasons why Gazans are going to the front lines. Um, and they're all uh, human, very human reasons that uh, you or I would, uh, that would compel any, any group of people to go uh, to those front lines um, and protest their, their, their lives, their living conditions, if we were forced to endure what Palestinians have been forced to endure. Um, so, I, I, I think I just, I would like people to, um, to stop, uh, to stop with these sort of superhero images of Palestinians. Um, because, you know, when, when you realize that, wait, there are some Palestinians who are scoundrels and some of them who are jerks and, and some of them who are saints. You know, we span the full spectrum of humanity like any group of people does. And, and our, we deserve liberation and liberty and freedom, not because we're good, not because we're these amazing uh, people, um, but because we're people. That's why we deserve, we deserve freedom. And Israel, on the other hand, deserves uh, to be held accountable, not because they're the worst villains on the planet, 
but because they are committing crimes and they are villains. So, you know, my point is that you don't have to be the worst country in the world in order to be held accountable, and you don't have to be the best uh, people in the world in order to deserve liberty. And I think that when we abandon these concepts and um, and and just sort of and and stand in solidarity with people who are struggling and who are oppressed, um, because that's that's the moral thing to do, uh, and we do it on that on those grounds, then I think I think we become uh, better better supporters and and um, and we gain sort of a, a deeper connection uh, with with the people that we're standing in solidarity with. Um, and it's based on empathy and compassion and not pity and not sort of a savior kind of mentality. Um, so, you know, for example, when I, uh, when I am standing in solidarity with people who are calling for an end to mass incarceration, um, and and this is not necessarily a solidarity thing. It's this is you know this is an American struggle to end this kind of mass incarceration. Um, it's not because uh, it's it's not because I think that uh, um, you know the people everybody in prison is innocent and and uh, but because there because it's a moral obligation to um, to to end an injustice, a basic injustice, sure. um, regardless of, of the nature of the people who are affected by it. In, <clears throat> I think you even mentioned this Al Jazeera article. Now, these are my words, not yours. But I keep, you know, oftentimes you hear about uh, uh, the question in the West, we're just waiting, where's the Palestinian Gandhi? As if this idea of our demand of Palestinians for the nonviolent struggle, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, as opposed to just understanding that these are human beings who are demanding their liberation and their freedom. And I mean, we could talk about uh, uh, the Geneva Conventions and the, you know, universal human rights and the, the ability and the legal, uh, uh, the legal means uh, of the armed struggle, but this demand of the left in the West for Nonviolent, the nonviolent struggle in order to kind of gain our support. There's a real hypocrisy there. Yeah, it's um, that's really a stunning kind of argument when I hear it on so many levels. I mean, I, we could fill the, this whole interview just breaking that down. Right. I mean, it's amazing. It, it really is because because what's implicit in that in that demand or that query is that we recognized. We recognize that you are oppressed, that you are, that somebody <laughs> exactly. is beating the crap out of you, that somebody is colonizing you, that is that's raping your villages and destroying you. But what we have a problem with is how you're resisting that. Like that's the implicit assumption of that query. Um, and so rather than taking a look at the forces and the violence that's being inflicted on us, what you're concerned with um, or what the questioner is concerned with is how we are reacting to that, right. and our reaction is 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 not comporting with your sensibilities of how uh, how we should resist. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that um, we actually there have been a lot of uh, Palestinian leaders who have uh, who have called um, for nonviolent resistance over time. Israel has either imprisoned or assassinated them. By the way. And now we have this um, popular movement called BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, which is a popular nonviolent uh, movement to hold Israel accountable. It is a re it, it's a it's a resistance movement. And that's unacceptable now. And to incredibly, <laughs> now that's you know that's not acceptable. And yeah. so Palestinians rightfully ask, okay, we did this, that's not right. We did this, that's not right. And here's your nonviolence, that's not good. What would you like us to do other than just sort of lay down and die and disappear? So, um, yeah, I don't accept that. Um, and and we don't need to have a Gandhi. Uh, uh, we, we don't need to have even nonviolence um, because it is our right as an indigenous people to resist 
um, this extraordinary violence that has been inflicted on us for decades, yeah. unrelentingly, and that it, that really has po that really continues to pose an existential threat to us. Um, we're disappearing. Palestine is quite literally being wiped off the map. Literally, we're just like our villages have disappeared, and the only what, what remains. Uh, of, of the geography itself is, is a tightly surveilled, highly controlled, uh, tiny enclaves um, of, of populations in Palestine, and this massive diaspora of exiled uh, Palestinians, um, uh, uh, most of whom are in refugee camps that aren't fit for human beings. Um, and uh, so that's what we have, and we have that, and we have, we have the actual history, the unrevised history, and our memories, and our traditions, and our culture, and our literature, and our poetry. And, our, and, uh, and, and this is one of the reasons why culture is so important, because, um, you know, as much as Israel's trying to steal that, as much as they're trying to claim that hummus and ma'lube uh, is, is some, you know, ancient uh, Israeli tradition or something, or or that you know they, they they're stealing our clothes and pretending that those are Israeli and, and our embroidery. Um, uh, uh, that's you know it's harder for them to claim those traditions as long as we continue to own them and celebrate them.